we are simply recapping what we went through with the children during the VBS. And uh, uh, please put up my slides so that I can be able to uh, bring you to speed what we learned because what we learned is also applicable to all of us uh, as even the parents. So in our VBS, in line with what Bishop has been teaching us, we structured it uh, to be about the Holy Spirit. And initially when we sat with our teachers, we really wondered how we are going to teach the children about the Holy Spirit. And, uh, but we asked the Holy Spirit to help us because uh, this uh, topic, uh, uh, I think only Bishop can do it well. But uh, somehow the Holy Spirit broke it down for us well so that we can break it down to the level of the children. And in introducing the Holy Spirit, the first thing, of course, is to really understand who the Holy Spirit is in the three persons of God. So if you open the next slide, you see uh, this illustration of the Trinity, uh, the Holy Spirit being uh, uh, a person of the Trinity. We are saying we have one God, three persons. So there is a Father who is God, the Son is God, the Spirit is God. Uh, and there is that relationship there. There is also a separation. The Father is, uh, is not the Spirit, and the Spirit is not the Son, and the Son is not the Father. So there are three separate, distinct persons, all of them, uh, again, one God. So that, that is really the introduction of the Spirit of God. The next slide you'll see, uh, because we try to, we've tried to make a lot of analogies about how the Trinity can be represented. But in, in my study, and also Bishop has also said here before, that most analogies we try to make about the Trinity at some point, they will not add up. So, so we stopped doing that, and we brought this issue of uh, how we can see the Holy Spirit in the Scripture, the, tr the Trinity in the Scripture. You remember in the book of, in the book of Matthew, chapter 3, uh, that as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went out uh, of the water, and at that moment, the heaven opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from the heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love, with him I am well pleased. So this illustration of the three persons of God is really the most practical and excellent way to teach the Trinity because on, on, we can see the three persons uh, of God. Uh, from heaven, the Father is speaking. Uh, the Son is the one who has been baptized and then the Holy Spirit appears in form of a dove. So we can see the Trinity, uh, three persons in, in, in God. So on the next slide you see now what we are learning through. Uh, the first day of EBS, uh, the Holy Spirit and me. So please, by the way, be careful because at the end of this, because it's a class, today is not a teaching, it's a class. Be, be, be alert, there will be questions, and there will also be a small quiz at the end of the, of the service, just to give you a heads up. Uh, there will also be some participation. Uh, there is some uh, area will require your participation, and you've seen we have excellent gifts here. They say great, they say uh, good trial. They, they, we have all these stickers and goodies to share with you. So please be ready to participate. So the first day of EBS, uh, the Holy Spirit and me, and when we were crafting this is because for a child, there is a lot of me in a child. They always want to know you know, and me, and me, and me, and me. Yeah? There's always that question that comes from a child. So when we say the Holy Spirit and me, what we are trying to see is how, how is our relationship? How do we relate? How the Holy Spirit, the third, the, the third person, the Trinity there, how do we relate with him there? So the Holy Spirit and me. On the first day, we learned that the Holy Spirit of God helps us. And we are reading from the book of John uh, chapter 14, uh, the book of John chapter 14 uh, starts with an illustration where, uh, no, just go back to the last the slide you are back in, the first day of school. The, the, the first day of school is the best way to illustrate John 14, because you remember John 14 says that, uh, let your hearts not be troubled, you believe in God, believe also in me. In John chapter 14, 
Jesus had given an indication that he's living. They had just done the last supper in John chapter 13. He had said somebody is going to betray him. So the, 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 the disciples had seen all the signs that Jesus is actually leaving them. And our illustration really is really the first day of school. A lot of you parents have had the opportunity to drop the children to school on their first day. And you can see the look on their faces when they see and they imagine that you are about to leave them. Of course, they think that you are leaving forever, but you're just dropping them, and then you pick them up later in the day. So this illustration is a child who is really feeling like he's been left and is about to cry because he thinks his parents have gone and they'll probably not come back for them. He'll be left with all these strangers. He does not know what to do with the strangers. So the children, their natural reaction is to cry. For us, we are looking at John 14. This is where the disciples were at. This is probably the look on their faces when they were being told that Jesus is living, when Jesus was trying to explain to them that he's about to die, that he was saying somebody is going to betray them, uh, betray him. So they were, had all this look in their faces. So he told them, let not your hearts be troubled. And in that is where, uh, in the next slide you see, uh, in the next slide you see is where now he promises them a helper. Because he has seen the look on their faces. He has seen these guys are worried. He tells them, I'm not leaving you like orphans. I'm not leaving you like orphans. I will come to you. And the Father will give you an advocate to help you and be with you forever. So that this state of looking at Jesus like he has left them completely, uh, they don't really panic about it. He's bringing another helper to be with them, to teach them everything that Jesus was doing, helping them understand the word of God. He'll be doing, the helper will do that for, for, for them. In the next slide, you see that uh, again in John 14, he continues to tell them that the helper will teach you all things. And he will remind you of everything that I have said. So this is really the kind of help that the advocate is doing. Because Jesus said himself that another advocate is coming. So he himself was an advocate for God. An advocate is somebody who pushes an interest for some, something. Yeah? So, so Jesus was an advocate advocating about God. So he says now another advocate is coming to teach you about God and to remind you all the things that he has, uh, he has taught you. The other thing that we learned is that in John chapter 16, verse 13, in the, in the next slide you see, that, that he'll guide you. He'll guide you in all truth. The help that actually we are talking about is the spirit of truth. The Bible calls him the spirit of truth. He'll help you to understand all things, to remember all the things you've been taught, and to guide you in all truth, in all the truth about the word of God. Uh, if you see when you have difficult choices to make, good choices, bad choices in life, uh, of course, it's usually not this clear in life that there is a sign that says this is a good choice, the other one is a bad choice. But it's usually that uh, still small voice that you have to listen to so that you can know that I'm making a good choice or I'm making a bad choice. Okay. Then, finally, on the helping day, on day one, the, first, the, 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 the next thing is he leads us to the cross. The Bible says in John 15, verse 26, that he will testify about me. That's the Holy Spirit. Jesus said the Holy Spirit will come and testify about you. And this is where we are saying that really uh, for you to accept Jesus in your heart, the Holy Spirit has to give you some level of conviction. And a lot of you have been convicted many times. And a lot of you have already been convicted and accepted Jesus in your lives. Because the Holy Spirit was testifying about Jesus to you and telling you he is a savior, believe in him, accept him as your Lord and savior. He, he leads us to the cross. He leads us, he makes our eyes to be open and see indeed we are sinners. For us actually, to, for you to come to a realization that you are a sinner and you need God, you actually need the Holy Spirit to open your eyes. You need the Holy Spirit to help to testify uh, to testify, uh, he'll be testifying about Jesus to you. So please do not 
uh, ignore that voice, that small voice that leads uh, you to Christ Jesus. So thank you. Now we are on um, the next day of VBS where we learned that the Holy Spirit uh, leads, uh, leads us. He leads, he leads me. And uh, to, to provoke our thinking, and probably uh, this, uh, I'll, I'll ask the media team to play a small clip that we also play to the children so that you can provoke your thinking about being led by God. Because sometimes being led in our spirit-led uh, theme, we have to understand what it means to be led by God and how sometimes he, lead us, he leads us. Uh, but let's watch this and maybe we shall have some discussion about uh, what it means to be led uh, by the Spirit of God. Just start it from the beginning, please. Amen. I don't know that you you got it. The message you may pick up. So I, I, I had to watch the video twice to get it. I hope nobody needs to watch twice to get it. But uh, I don't know what you got in that message. Just just uh, for the sake of this being a classroom, Teacher Josephine, please carry for me some sweets and some stickers and a microphone so that one of the parents can tell us what is the key learning from that video? What, what is the learning? What do you see? Any volunteer? Let me have a volunteer so that we can uh, get one. Who, who, is, who is with the microphone? Any volunteer? Okay, please go. They are not volunteering. They are not volunteering. So you'll volunteer, you'll volunteer somebody. Just volunteer somebody then because, you know, yeah, parents don't like to be put under pressure. But usually there is usually no right or wrong answer. It's really your perspective about what you've seen. Um, so key learning is our ways might not be what God sees in our lives. He sees everything from the broader perspective. Um, from the, from the clip, um, he went with his own thinking, mm. and God was literally guiding him. Mm. And uh, 
through his guidance, he would have gotten more in, abundan in abundance mm. as opposed to just one drop of water yeah. when he needed a free-flowing river and just plenty in abundance because that's what God gives us. Amen. Makofi, one clap. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I like that. In, in his he was following his own understanding. So he's looking for his own way, his own solution, his own way of getting the water. And he ended up with very little, yet there was too much. Thank you so much. Somebody else, different perspective. What, what did you see from the clip? You saw something different? Or uh, you want to add that? Uh, anybody, please uh, need some active class. And you've given her a present, eh? Yes. Okay. Or oh, there's some, uh, some, some, some gifts for you there. Uh, Mze Charles here. Yeah. Mze Charles has to participate here. Uh, Charles, uh, Charles is in the media. He must really have gotten a lot. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. After Simon and the media and attacker is of gifts. Like in the Meona Kamako Kajama and Kamujeuri, because uh -huh. yes. he, he wants to have his way, and the hand kept uh, blocking, and then he donches, he kept mm. donching up to where he gets a tap, it almost gets cut, yes. and he finds his own way to fix. And just like my sister said, God seems to have a better plan, you know, when you later see the flowing water, and yeah. yet he finally only succeeds to get a drop. Mm. So I think uh, we must submit to the leadership of the Holy Spirit mm. if then we must have abundance in life. Amen. That's a lesson for me. Thank you. Thank you. One clap. Yeah. Where, where uh, are the gifts, please? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gifts is the end of what Charles. Yeah, that's very important. Yeah, so this uh, Mjanja, he has his own way of doing things, and yet God is leading to abundance. And, and I think we can say a lot about that, but we'll all come to the same. So if you go to, this, to the next slide, actually what, what, what we are seeing here is we have, we have our mind uh, in Romans chapter 8, verse 6. Uh, not sure those can be seen well. I think you can. For the mind that is governed by the flesh is death, but the mind that is governed by the spirit is life and peace. So this is the mind we have seen. He has his own mind. He has his own way of thinking. He's been told what to do, but he's, uh, he's still insisting that his mind, his way, is probably going to give him the result. But he did not earn him exactly what he wanted. He wanted. So on that day, we also learned in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, this very signature memory verse that all of us must understand. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Siyo tunelewa kanisa. Iyo kanisa utunelewa. Nasi mukona like jipahali. Ada niki switch off, eh? Niki switch off, you know where to find it, eh? It is also right here. Let's read it together. Romans, Romans chapter 8, verse 14. It says, For all spirits of God are children of God. Are the children of God. For all those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. So there is your mind, there is God's, there is a Spirit's mind, so you have to, to make sure you back out because sometimes you are always pushing, you are pushing, you are trying, you are trying so hard, yet all you need to do is actually submit to God's guidance. Okay. So finally, thank you children, welcome back. I hope you've enjoyed your cup of tea. So with this having your mind and the spirit uh, having uh, sometimes a different perspective, we went to day three of the VBS, that the Holy Spirit empowers me. And if you go to the next slide, you'll see the tug of war that exists in Galatians chapter 5, verse 17, that there is the desires of the flesh that are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing what you want to do. So there is a tug of war in your life. 
there was a tug of war in that man's life because there is what he wants, there is what he thinks, and there is what the Spirit is saying. So there is a big tug of war. And the Holy Spirit empowers us to, to win this tug of war. If you go to the next slide, the Bible says that if you walk by the Spirit, if you live by the Spirit, then you'll be able, you'll not gratify the desires of the flesh, but you'll be able to be led by the Spirit and bear the fruit of the Spirit. So if you, with the help of the Holy Spirit, if we walk by him, you'll be able to bear the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Uh -huh. And self-control. Those are the fruit. That's a, actually, the Bible says the fruit. So this is the fruit. Eh? The fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the flesh becomes all these other things that we see here. Sexual immorality, that's in Galatians 5, 19 to 21. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, uh, strife, uh, jealousy, fits of anger, makasiriko, makasiriko mingi, makasiriko yoni, fruit of the flesh, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, uh, envy, uh, drunkenness, drunkenness is a fruit of the flesh, uh, orgies, and things like that. The Bible continues to say that, like he t he, Paul says that, like he had told them before, and is now saying it, that those who live by, this, uh, by the flesh will not inherit the kingdom of God. So that's the three-day VBS. Therefore, but uh, now I have to pick it up in bishop style uh, to conclude can we, can we do in conclusion? So in conclusion, in conclusion, we have said the Holy Spirit helps us to know God's truth, helps us to know him. The Holy Spirit leads us, and sometimes that being led is not that easy because we've seen there is some conflict that exists. But the Holy Spirit empowers us to also bear the fruit that is godly. Is that Okay. Tuko pamoja. Are we ready to take a quiz now? Children, are you ready to take a quiz? We were just revising what you did over the VBS. And in the VBS also we did some craft. If you looked at the craft we did, uh, some of it was how a holy, a holy spirit filled heart looks like, what is inside a holy spirit filled heart. So we made a heart and we were putting down these stickers with the nice things that a holy spirit filled heart looks like. We also made another craft where we had uh, the good fruits and the fruits of the flesh. We were putting them in a, in a what, what, what did you call it? Garbage bin. So the, the fruits of the flesh, we were putting them in the garbage bin. And then the fruit of the spirit is where we were putting in a tree so that it can bear fruit. So parents, I hope we've picked a good lesson on one or two things about being led by the Spirit and, the, of course, the, uh, the whole technical is around it. Uh, but please, uh, the most critical thing for you to be led by the Spirit, please know there is this conflict that is going on between you, the flesh. The flesh is your biggest uh, opposer of what the Spirit wants. So please make sure you walk by the Spirit so you don't satisfy the desires of the flesh. So with that, I would like to ask uh, my teachers to distribute uh, the quiz for today. We always do a quiz or a cut in every, in every lesson. Uh, this is just to deepen our, uh, our understanding and help us just to revise and, uh, and know more.